In this video, I'm going to show you an example of interfacing with and using Ravitback's news analytics data in MATLAB. Since news has always been a big factor driving financial market, we can use this structured news data to keep tabs on the temperature of the market, identify patterns, and also inform our trading strategies or factor models. The direct interface to Ravenpack News Analytics in the Data Feed Toolbox lets you bring the News Analytics data in and use MATLAB's analytical capabilities to start asking questions on the lines of, how do positive and negative earnings reports affect prices? How long does this impact typically last? What about layoffs? How are layoffs typically perceived by the market and how does this impact my portfolio? Can I use real-time news sentiment in my more traditional trading strategies? And we can't necessarily keep up with all the news since most of it is unscheduled, right? So the ability to bring this data into MATLAB and automate this process of keeping tabs on news real-time can prove to be very useful. I'm going to show you an example in MATLAB that answers one such question. We'll see how Twitter's Q2 earnings announcement was received by the market and see if there was somehow a correlation between the stock price and news sentiment during that high volatility period for the stock. To do this, I wanted to bring in about 10 days worth of historical news analytics data just for Twitter around the time of the announcement and then see how the news sentiment looked both leading up to and after the earnings report was announced. Jumping into MATLAB, in this case, since I wanted to bring in a substantial amount of data, I was able to download a data file from the Ravenpack News Analytics website for the month of July 2015. The CSV file that you see right here contains data about all equity news events for the month of July. I can then use the RP Loader function in MATLAB to filter and bring data in as needed. So I'm just going to run this real quick. So this function that you see here, it's a part of the new Ravenpack interface that I was talking about earlier. So we're able to quickly select a date range of interest, which in this case is the 22nd to the 31st of July. This gives us a nice buffer around the earnings announcement. We can also do things like pick the entity name or the company that interests us. Here that's Twitter, of course. So this is a nice way to filter and zero in on the data you actually want to analyze instead of bringing in all the data available to you. So you'll think of this as almost an exploratory phase where we look for patterns uh, based on this new data source. So here's a sample of the Ravenpack data we just requested. So we can open it up, take a look at it, and see some examples. So you'll see here we have the timestamp at which each, each news item came in, the name of the entity right here, and other information like the group and category of uh, news right here. Let's just expand this a little more. Um, it gives us an idea about what exactly happened, right? What is the news event talking about? So for example, here, if we take this one right here, you'll see um, that the news item talks about Twitter's price target and the fact that it was downgraded. So Ravenpack automatically analyzes this news and comes up with a bunch of metrics, right? So for example, the event sentiment score is a score between zero and 100 that captures the new sentiment for the piece of news. So 50 indicates neutral sentiment, anything above 50 is positive, anything below 50 is negative sentiment. So here, since the price target was downgraded, you'll see a value of 29 representing negative sentiment. Similarly, we know a lot of the news cycle can just consist of reposted news, right? So check and make sure that the news is novel in nature. It's providing us with new information. We can always look at the novelty score, which is again on a scale of zero to 100, with 100 being the most novel news. So what this data has done is it's taken all these abstract concepts in our mind about using news to trade and actually given us some metrics that we can use to create trading rules with. So if you want to start understanding the different fields available to you in the Ravenpack data right here, I'd suggest you take a look at the Ravenpack News Analytics user guide that can be found in the developer zone of Ravenpack's website. Coming back to the script I have prepared here, now that I have the relevant news analytics data in MATLAB, 
I can start leveraging the power of MATLAB to quickly manipulate, filter, plot, and understand the data before even coming up with a strategy. Right, so here that might involve some quick manipulations like converting timestamps from UTC to Eastern time. Maybe we can also filter out certain news events based on the type of event or even the novelty of the news. Right, and that's exactly what we'll do here. We'll only keep news events that have a novelty score greater than 80 since we don't want to let reposted news skew what we see here. And just to show you the volatility that Twitter stock price showed during this period, I have this animated plot. And in this chart, you'll see a lot of drawdowns and volatility in general. And I want to see if this can be explained by the news events that occurred during this time period. right? So that's where we can leverage all the high-level libraries in MATLAB, um, which will help us quickly generate even more meaningful analytics given the data. So in order to visualize that, I'll quickly merge the new sentiment and the Twitter price series. And using one of the moving average technical indicator functions, we'll also calculate and visualize the corresponding moving average of the sentiment. And we'll use this moving average as a proxy for the aggregated market sentiment towards Twitter. So I have this chart right here where we track the Twitter stock price again but now with these gray sections that are used to represent time periods when the market is closed for trading. Here you'll see superimposed on the Twitter price series are these green and red blobs. Each blob represents a news event and we use green to represent news that comes with a positive sentiment and red to represent negative news. Right? The size of each blob represents the strength of sentiment. So the bigger the green blob, the stronger the positive sentiment in a piece of news. Of course, earnings for Twitter were reported at the close of trading on the 28th of July. So leading up to that, you'll see that the number of news events increase, and in general, there's a positive sentiment. And then the earnings were announced, and they beat estimates, so you'll see a lot of green blobs concentrated here. So things were looking up. However, later on during the earnings call, there was some talk about the immediate outlook not looking too good in terms of profitability. So that's when you start to see the red blobs build up here. That continues on, and the market reacts with Twitter's stock price tanking right after. So getting to the corresponding market sentiment here, we'll use the moving average chart to look at that, uh, it seems to capture it pretty well. There's some positivity leading up to the earnings. Then there's a peak early in the earnings call before the sentiment suddenly takes a turn for the worse, somewhat mirroring the Twitter stock price in itself. So there does seem to be some sort of correlation between the new sentiment and the stock price from what we see here. Maybe we use this and come up with some rules and integrate this into a trading strategy. But we've only looked at bringing in historical data up to now, right? To actually execute this trading strategy in MATLAB, you would also need the real-time Ravenpack News Analytics data coming in. A good place to find all the different functions available to access Ravenpack data would be the documentation. You'll see a list of functions of which we just used RP Loader to read static, historical Ravenpack data from a file. But if we wanted to establish a live connection to the data feed and bring data in that way, there are other functions like real time and time series to go about doing this. In our next example, we're going to do just that and bring in real-time data. However, before we go about doing that, there's a little bit of bookkeeping to do. First, we'll need to open up the Ravenpack Data Gateway application that comes as part of the Ravenpack installation. And then on the MATLAB side, we'll need to add this jar file called the data gateway client.jar. This comes with the Ravenpack installation as well, and we'll add it to the Java class path. MATLAB has the flexibility of accessing Java classes, so here it's just going to use the class that Ravenpack provides to give us access to the data gateway. Once that's done, we're ready to connect to Ravenpack from MATLAB. So here we'll establish that connection using the Ravenpack command and our Ravenpack credentials. You'll see here my credentials are blurred out. And once we're done with this, 
we can go ahead and start asking for real-time data for certain fields using the real-time command. So if I run this section right here, you'll see the different pieces of news that now come into MathLab in a structured table format. So you can use this as an input to your trading strategy that may, for example, wait for certain pieces of significant news to pull the trigger on a trade. Right? So you'll see a number of different pieces of news coming in, along with some other Ravenpack analytics. This listener function right here is the one that populates the variable we just saw. Listeners basically wait for certain events to occur and then respond to them once they occur. So in this case, the response is to display the news event in this variable. You could always modify it to execute trades or refine your factor model as a response to incoming news. So summing up the different ways in which you can bring news analytics data into MATLAB, I have this little cheat sheet right here. If you're looking to bring in historical data, you have the option of connecting to Ravenpack and using the time series function to bring data in. However, you should remember that this is limited by data size. So if you're looking to work with more than three or four days worth of data, I would recommend downloading the CSV files with the historical data and then using RP Loader to import it into MATLAB. The time series function would work when you need to bring in intraday data and of course you have the real time function to bring in real time data from Ravenpack and we just saw this in the last example. Hopefully that's painted a vision of how you can bring both historical and real time Ravenpack data in a MATLAB and then use it to go about building strategies and models. For more information, you can always watch more videos on this page or even request a trial of MATLAB if you want to start trying this out.